Hello everybody and welcome back to some mega modded Gungeon. I'm here with Never Named. He's just released a new update for his mod that fixed all the yeah. curses and stuff and did a bunch of other stuff. Basically it nerfed everything that I found that was too good or too bad. Yeah, uh, Turtle's been playing with a, a sort of in-development version of this for a little bit already, so it's not going to be like a huge surprise. Yeah. But at the same time, it's nice to get it officially out there. Uh, like actual players if you heard a loud thunk that's because my dog just flopped over in the corner <laughs> is it okay is dog okay is she she's fine but she okay she's my hefty. dog's name is tatum and tatum doesn't lie down she flops <laughs> she just keels she, over she does not seem to know how to sit down she just falls over and it is genuinely <laughs> concerning and simultaneously hilarious. <laughs> nice. We got the Primal Salt Peter here, one of the first resources I've housed. Um, it basically purifies non-boss element resistances. Something that's kind of interesting, basically it means we can use a fire weapon on a fire enemy and it should still kill it, sort of thing. Um, and then we also got the Wall Ray as well. Effect, but, yeah, uh... it's a pretty niche effect. It is a D tier item, I'm pretty sure, though. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, we got the Wall Ray as well, which is a never named beam weapon that is essentially just... Mm -hmm. Fuck controller players. <laughs> you got aim assist, fuck it's you. It's a... it's a meme. No, it's actually a pretty good weapon, it does good damage. <clears throat> yeah, Wolverine is actually... <laughs> is... I actually put it in the shitty gun class. Yeah, I definitely think it is a... a weapon that, that you're not going to be seriously using throughout the whole of the run. But if you get it like this, early on, it's going to have very, very good ammo efficiency. Um like very good ammo efficiency and actually pretty good damage the one thing i'll say is like i was saying on controller aim assist kind of takes precedent and will try and lock you onto enemies that you're facing directly but this gun doesn't fire directly forward so not super useful nope. yep and yep. also uh, this game very has sad about the nerfs i did I, I i wouldn't say i'm very sad i think that pencil will be unfortunately genuinely pretty useless on controller now but I, I it was also a necessary nerf like it, that thing was way too strong considering you never like actually ever used no. it for what it was made I, for. I, like the way that i use oh for god's sake it spawned on me i never used it the intended way so it definitely needs fixing but at the same time the reason i used it that way is because you can't really use it the intended way on controller it just doesn't really said, work how, how the fuck would you know because you never did it that's true but i don't think it will um and then the double gun as well was basically dealing twice the amount of damage that it should have been dealing because never named for some reason thought that it'd be hard to hit both bullets on one enemy yeah, I'm, which is I'm completely it's, untrue it's very much a case of i'm not sure what i was at, was thinking at all <laughs> so he's uh he's nerfed those and of course there's the curse changes which were pretty necessary uh, at least in my opinion pretty necessary um oh yeah yeah I just, I basically, all I think is, curse systems are fun, but they should never feel frustrating, because it's, it's no, it's no fun to add a mechanic that just artificially frustrates the player. Oh, Bladderer. Yeah, this is a cool weapon. <laughs> Got mm -hmm. really, really good ammo, too. <clears throat> I like it. The sprite for it's so strange, but I like it. <laughs> I, I wasn't sure what to do for a yeah. gun that fires bullets, so I just, I just did that. Ow! Yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty powerful. Really, but I'm currently taking a lot of damage. Because the yeah, bullets, you've got you've got to uh, wait for that delay, so it's not going to be. Bullets, yeah, the are in themselves. They they are a handicap to the gun. Yeah. Like they don't deal contact damage or anything, and as well, yeah, as you can see, you co inherently you kind of over you over fire the gun and end up wasting a lot of ammo that you don't really need to. Because for the most part, on these weaker enemies, it's killing in one hit, or what just happened there, where the bullets just shoot at a wall. So you don't actually know how many you need to fire out. It's kind of a bit of a a challenge to to get it right. It's kind of an interesting gun. It's got a lot of very very good things about it, but it's also got a lot of downsides. There's a reason well, I made the bullets deal. Uh, 15 damage. The soul bauble. Never seen this before. Um, has a chance Rose to decrease enemies' health system. drastically, chance to increase with less HP. Chance increases, ah. I think that's meant to say. Okay, yeah. So, like, okay. as you get so, closer to death, I guess it... So, basically, it's, back. it's a... Hello. Um, it's a, um... 
Gun the stri Gungeon Strain, whatever it's called. What the hell is that thing called? The Gundrometer. Yeah. Gundrometer Strain. It's it's like that, but better. What? Um. Uh. Okay, so that's one that you shot out of combat, and ah, I never went and added system to kill the bats that you should spawn out of combat and because i use the same because these bats are using the exact same code to turn them friendly as companions do and companions are coded to teleport to you when you use the oh teleport. wait they die to fire yeah fire still affects flying things oh my god this is this is a useless weapon against this against this boss I mean, it still took off more than half a I mean, yeah, but it's very hard to use when it gets, gets a lot of fire laid down. That That is unintentional, but I'm not sure if I should fix no, it. No, no, I don't think that needs fixing. It's, an, it's pretty niche. Hey, and we got Gunther. the fake fucking Gunther. It is Gunther. I Although it doesn't, Gunther. like, show up in the name because Gungeon doesn't recognize the letter. <laughs> it is Gunther. He's he's a chill fella. Right. I should probably look for secret rooms in this first floor to try and get the uh, you could go Oubliette. money quest done. Yeah, I actually could, you're right. I don't go Oubliette enough. I think I'm just like scarred from going to it in hard mode so that I just don't go to it anymore. Post-traumatic stress disorder. Yeah. Post-Oubliette <laughs> stress can't, disorder. I, ca I can't hear. I can't hear PTSD without thinking of that clip of that fucking teenage kid on have you seen it where they're interviewing him and he's like he's talking about like an ex-girlfriend and he said i think she had ptsd post-traumatic post-traumatic down syndrome or something <laughs> it's like how do you get it that wrong <laughs> have you seen the clip it's so funny no i haven't oh my I god haven't. it's hilarious i haven't at all Oh, oh, you wait. did break the water did, barrel. There should be a second one, though. There almost always is. Or you could go to the jungle. Oh, actually, yeah, that's a good point. I've been to the jungle in a while. Let's go to the jungle. <clears throat> um, yeah. Post-traumatic Down don't, Syndrome. Don't it's like, break the, the barrels in here. Barrels at the bottom, so I bait them to the side. I know you don't need me to tell you this, but I've been... Honestly, you, you should uh, tell me this. Yeah, you know, you're right, you are a little baby. A little idiot baby. I am. A little idiot baby with post-traumatic Down Syndrome. <laughs> oh, I just found it hilarious. Post-traumatic Down Syndrome, what the hell? I was so pleased when I came up with this little... It's, it's, it's a really simple solution, but me, me, and, um, me and Apache were trying to figure out how to set the tree on fire. Like, what would be the best way of doing it? And I remembered that those oil barrels and explosive barrels exist that barely get used for anything. Explosive barrels more so than oil barrels. Yeah. But even the oil barrels, like, they very rarely come into play. They, they, you do find them a lot, but they don't really do much. Oil barrels feel like they were added just to, just because oil was there. Yeah. And the and the other barrel the other goops had barrels. So yeah, the oil, pretty much. So, so they just made a barrel for oil as well. Uh, I I I still fucking love this floor. Th this gun's gonna be so fitting for this floor as well, considering bullets actually appear on this floor. That was a bit overkill. That dude was fucked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I probably can't so that, use that, this. But this, oh yeah, they move. They'll move way too fast. This is another thing I really... I just... I'm, I, I know that I shouldn't really take the credit for this, because it's definitely all Apache's work, but I'm still really proud of the of this floor. Like, the, the work that I did on it. Even though the work that I did on it is really minor compared to what he did. Um, I still really, really like this floor a lot. I think the rooms and the enemy... The enemy layouts, as in, like, the enemies I used, they work really well for this floor. Like, the difficulty is pretty perfect. The styling's pretty on point. Yeah, yeah, no, it's real nice. The only thing that can make it better is custom enemies, but uh, those Cu custom really enemies and cus scope. Yeah, custom enemies and custom music are the two things I wish this floor had, but they're the two things that are also quite hard to add. Yeah, 
music is just <clears throat> difficult from a composing standpoint. Really. Yeah, because you really, for one, you've got to be extremely talented to make the music anyways. Like, it's it's definitely harder than modding, even though modding is hard in itself. Um, and then on top of that, getting it stylistically on point to what Gungeon, like, to fit in with Gungeon is even harder. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I saw the Mimic this time. Honestly, Gunther's actually pretty good. Yeah, I wonder how much damage he does. Like, I suppose he only has 200 rounds, which is his main downside compared to his big brother, but... Actually, we can check. Uh, if you go into the console and type NN Deconstruct Gun, it'll give you all the gun stats Ooh, in the console. I did not know that. That's cool. It's, it's something I built for debugging, but it could also be, like, useful just if you what want to you know the exact... Deconstruct Gun. NN... Yep. Yeah, just uh, damage 7.5. 7 That's really interesting, yeah, I like yeah. that. Yeah, it gives a lot more than the average player would need because it's meant to be like a technical deconstruction yeah. for debugging, but you can still see all the stats in there. This is another thing with this floor I really like. The fact that I was able to use snakes and chameleons and parrots in an appropriate setting that they were probably realistically made for originally. Snakes may have been designed for the Old West, but I agree with you. Yeah. And parrots for the pirates. Oh, that a gold key. You get the idea. Nice. Oh, and as well, I know, like even though they're the weakest enemies ever, th this is probably one of my favorite enemy subtypes. The the tribal with the with the arrow kin. I love this. What are you it's racist? Just... <laughs> you racist. A cultural appropriation of arrow kin. <clears throat> but yeah, I, I just love the idea of having like like specific sort of factions of enemies. You've got the the tribal guys for the tribal rooms. You've got the animals, which are kind of obvious, but then you've also got the militia as well, which is like the uh, the, um, the Rambo. The Rambo style sort of thing, yeah. Which fits in with Gunning the boss quite well. That, that's, that's another thing I um, that I had the idea for, for doing for the boss, because we did actually want to do uh, a resprited Gatling gull as like a gorilla. Um... As, uh, Patchy uh, also uh, was talking at one point about making uh, uh, kill pillars, but stumps. Yeah, there were some really cool ideas for the custom boss, but overall it was just too difficult and too time consuming to do. So I just said like, we. I think I think it was actually after he'd made the belly of the beast and I had the idea for the parasitic flesh. Well, it, he had the idea for calling it that, but I had the idea for using the, um, the Marines pass. And then I kind of thought, actually, having the Rambo boss fit on this floor would work pretty damn well. And yeah, and uh, Apache it's added in the extra summons boss, and stuff. You know. hmm? It's not meant to be a Rambo boss. No, but I mean like it's, it's it, I know it's not specifically Rambo, but it's got that kind of style and it fits quite well. Um, it's like, I think, I think it's called like the Jungle Commando, isn't it? Something like that. It's called the Commando. Yeah. Um, and it worked really well, and then he added the extra summons, and I really like uh, with the parasitic abomination all the the extra abomination summons that he added to that fight as well. They're really cool. Oh yeah, yeah. That's a baby amulet. What the hell? Bronze amulet blanks shrink enemies. Oh, nice. I really yeah, want to so get this with like the, like the owl or something at some point. And while shrunken, they can be stepped on to instantly kill them. Nice. And they don't deal contact damage while shrunk. Okay, that's going to be pretty useful. Oop, this guy's out of mana. Uh, we use this for a bit. The rain effect is also just oh, so good. And the door. I know, I know, like, a lot of the stuff he, um, he just pulled from the game. And it's just, like, how he sort of reconfigured and implemented. But even still, like, the fact that he got all of it working is still incredible and so good. Like, look well, yeah, no, at this the door fact, animation. The fact oh, that those so cool. The fact that those doors, like, weren't, uh, aren't in vanilla is a, a sin. They are yeah. amazing. They're just incredible. I do wonder, with the... The at one point planned bigger paid DLC. If this would have been one of the flaws that made its way to the game, we never they really found out much information about that. They were talking about. Uh, I know one thing about the big paid DLC at least. They were considering adding a floor after Bullet Hell. Oh, that would have been so good. And I know this because of one uh, message 
from Rubel, I believe it was, talking about it. That would have been so uh, good. <laughs> uh, but he didn't even say any details. He just like heavily implied that they were thinking about it. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things where, like, I am completely fine they didn't do it, but it would have been awesome. Yeah, it would have been. But at the same time, it's completely understandable. Yeah. I mean, didn't they say, like, the main reason? It wasn't even that they just wanted to leave Gungeon as a title behind. It was more so that their legacy code was so fucked, it was basically yeah. impossible to do without remaking the whole game from scratch. Yeah. Which yeah. I find hilarious. <laughs> but then yeah. again, th didn't they make this game as sort of a way to learn how to make games? Which is kind of incredible if you think about it. I'm quite sure if it was that. It wasn't that uh, basic. They, all, they were already competent coders, but like, yeah. It was still that Gungeon, sort of learning experience it, like, game. A uh, heavily amateur product. Yeah. Yeah, it's, in, it's insane how successful it is for how, um, how... Oh, what the hell? What's all this grass? When did this get here? Oh, I remember Apache talking about that. He added grass to this floor. Oh, I never knew about that. <laughs> it's pretty cool. He, he posted about it in modding channel for the technical achievement. Because like the grass is, is actually more than just grass. Yeah, you can actually like hide uh, in it and like cover your character a bit. And it can also be set on fire. Oh, that's really cool. Did I get hit there? I think I did, didn't I? Yeah. See? There you go. That's, that's really cool. Ah, uh, fuck me. Go, oh, my pretties. Yeah, I gotta say, Apache is fucking genius. <laughs> I love how Prismatism is internally called Prismatismas. <laughs> Prismatismas. Charge up your active items upon room clear. Nice. Don't have an active yet, but there you go. I love how that's the opposite of... So in Isaac, you have 4.5 volt that makes the yeah, Isaac yeah. items charge like Gungeon items. And now we have the AA battery, which <laughs> makes the Gungeon items charge like Isaac items. Now I just need an active. I don't know how effective it's going to be, but I imagine it can be pretty strong. Right, this weapon should be fairly decent for these floors. Oh, those is enemies, there, lovely. Is, is there synergies to give you the different types of bats? Yes. Good. <laughs> it has four synergies. Three of them allow it to fire the other types of bat. And there's one more that is uh, a little bit more than that, that you might see if you find it. That would be pretty awesome. <clears throat> Even though, like, Gungeon doesn't really have as many soft synergies like, like Isaac does, um, I still think the synergies in this game are, like, so good. Some of them are so fun, and I think that's, I think yeah, it's one of those things, it made modding a lot more complex if you want to actually add synergies, but a lot more enjoyable to, like, play with. Dungeon synergies are rock hard. <laughs> they some hard synergies. Yeah, it was, it, like, it was one of those things as well that, like, before the synergies existed from AG and D, it was such a weird thing in the game, where, like, Basically, like, six items had these proper named bespoke synergies, and it was like, but why? No. No, they didn't have names. Oh, well, they're not named, but oh, oh they just gave no, you the arrow, were... didn't you? Yeah, they just gave you the little arrow of your head when you picked them up, and they were like all stat increases, except for one of them that just didn't do anything. <laughs> yeah. Um... And then, like, they took away a few of them because they were with starting weapons. Like, there was the the one where if you got the um, the Mega Dowser with um, the Cultist Starter, it, like, doubled its damage. Yeah, they, like, they, like, added the synergies and then they took away the synergies. Yeah. Because, like, back in my day, because I I've been playing for a long time. I don't actually know how long you've played Gungeon for? I've been playing since just after Supply Drop. I've been playing since well before Supply Drop. Ah, okay. Yeah, I think I think I, I very first saw Gungeon. Uh, I, I'd, I'd had Gungeon, I'd owned Gungeon for a while before that, but I only first started playing it after I think seeing Retromation 
cover the beta of the supply drop update. Um, and then when the supply drop update came out, about a week after that, I was on holiday with my girlfriend and her parents and I brought my laptop and it was the only game I had downloaded on Steam in offline mode and there was no internet where we were. You killed so that guy, by the way. So I was just like, I just roll over him, I know. I don't know what I'm doing. Not anymore. Um, but yeah, yes. uh... Look, this is going to be probably peculiar. But I learned about Gungeon, my first exposure to Enter the Gungeon. The way I learned about it, what made me want to buy it, what made me want to play it, was a Markiplier video on the game. Oh, I think I've seen that one, yeah. So everything I've ever made for this game, technically, everyone Markiplier. owes Markiplier <laughs> for that. That's kind of crazy. Which, it's a, it's a strange turn of events. Yeah. It's like, you're like, oh yeah, I got introduced to it by a roguelike YouTuber. It's like, oh yeah, I didn't. Yeah, oh, I think I just, oh, I think I just unlocked you unlock. this. Yeah, just unlocked this. Batter bullets. Smack enemies on fatal damage. Does that just mean they fucking get launched when you kill them? Yeah, it's basically just the effect of Casey, but in a bullet modifier. That's I know really there's cool. an unused item that did that. that was bullets, uh, wasn't it? Yeah, but I just decided I, I don't want to make Q bullets. I want to give it its own theming. So I yeah. just made Casey bullets. <laughs> I like it. Oh, that's that, that, that feels nice. Oh, that's a satisfying noise to have when you kill an enemy. And it's completely automatic. Yeah. Actually, no, I, a lot of money wait, right no, it's now. not automatic. Oh, what the fuck am I talking about? Yeah, I had to code in that myself. Why did I say it was automatic? I'm just stupid. I'm a maroon. A maroon? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a maroon. I'm a maroon. I'm a maroon. I'm, you're a macaroon. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a macaroon. There you go. Oh, fuck. <laughs> that was pretty good. I like this. Ugh, I'm giving me trash. Yep. Such is the position we find ourselves in. I started playing way back in the day, and... So, I, w I started playing, and I... It was my first roguelike and it was my first bullet hell and really? obviously while gungeon isn't the hardest game out there no, it's also i would i would not say something you yeah. want to be your first i, I, I would time. i would say for a roguelike or bullet hell of any of any genre gungeon is actually an extremely hard game when you first play it it has a very what? steep learning curve. It's one of those weird games where it has a very steep learning curve, but once you learn it, it becomes really easy. It's like going to an... It's it's like a virgin going to an S&M dungeon. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I gotta say, it's a hard game to play as your first one. I, I, I remember when I first played Gungeon, like, pe people say to me, like, oh my god, how'd you get this good at the game? And I'm just like, I literally just played it for a long time. And people are like, oh, but I'm like, um... The sticky launcher. I'm like, oh, like 10 hours in and I've not come past the first floor yet. It's like, yeah, same for me. It took me forever to get past the first floor. Shoot sticky bombs. Oh, is this just a thingy reference? <laughs> yeah, man curve property. Nice. Team Fortress 2, baby. Um, so, yeah, I was the exact same because I sucked at uh, yeah. Dungeon when I first started I, out. I, even though I'd already played Binding of Isaac prior, which obviously is a very different game, but it's still a roguelike and still a bit of a bullet hell. Um, I still sucked so hard at this game when I first played it. And if you remember, as I said to you, I was on a two week holiday with no internet when I first played it. I got really hooked on it. I was playing it like every night when we, were, when we got back home, but I had no way of looking up anything. I was completely blind for two weeks. I literally couldn't look up things if I wanted to. This thing's weak. <laughs> it's basically it's it's like a, a oh, this weaker thing sticky crossbow, I guess. Because it has like more ammo and a bigger clip, but does less damage. It does not do enough damage for how slow its fire is. Yeah, fair. What does this do again? I have no idea. I just lost some money and gained a active item. Emergency supplies. I think that just spawns a ton of pickups. 
Oh god, it doesn't even... Oh my god, yes, it sucks. Sorry. I'm sorry, but it sucks. You need to buff the damage on that a little bit, I think. I'm, I'm sorry, but your life's work is terrible <laughs> and I hate it. It's a very cool gun and like it looks very good and the reference, I like it, but... I would maybe buff the damage on that thing a little bit and maybe just like lower the, de the ammo to 200. Or maybe less and just buff the damage. I just feel like it's something that's an explosive sticky launcher should feel strong. Like, especially considering the one in um, TF2 is pretty strong. It does just spawn up on a pickups. Okay. Um, but yeah. The first, like, week of playing the game, I was like... I would only make it to the first boss if the first boss just happened hey. to spawn super close. Yeah, yeah. I was exactly the same. And I remember, um... I think my first boss... Me. My first boss was Gatling Gull. And Gatling Gull's probably the worst one you can get as your very first boss. In my opinion. Because he's the, he's the, like, the most random on the first floor. By the way, you still a fan of that clip? Still a fan of the clip? What clip? Yeah, the, the clip of the, this gun. Oh yeah, I fucking love it. <laughs> this I'm this gun's so just... proud of this. This gun's just a great gun in general. I, I really like um, when a gun can wholeheartedly be seen as... If, if you showed this some, to someone that hadn't really played the game much and hadn't seen all the guns, they would just think this is a vanilla gun. There's nothing about this gun that looks super out there or not on theme. Everything about it just feels vanilla and it's great. Consider so much of this was is taken from vanilla. Yeah. The the clip is custom and I'm very proud of that. But the idea is is basically it's meant to be like the little brother of the the vertebrae. Yeah. And even though it's all custom made, it shares many things in common with the vertebrae. I'm gonna say I love it. I think it's so good. Um Wisp in a bottle. Give that a go. Uh, uh the the color palette is taken directly yeah, from the Yeah, I can see that, yeah. And funnily enough, the name Uzi Spine Millimeter is actually an unused name for the vertebrae. Oh right. <laughs> yeah. Nice. I was just going through stuff and I was like, Uzi Spine Millimeter, that's that's not a that's like it's a cheesy pun, but I like it. I want to make that a thing. Oh, damn. Okay, I'm setting everything on fire. I see. Ooh, I like the, like, little vibrating effect coming out of me. That's, like, the little sort of distortion. That's really cool. Yeah, the, uh, the spine millimeter is, is basically, you know, a, a poor man's vertebrae cave. Yeah. It I has... gotta say, it, it... that's another thing as well. It's, its level of damage and power is exactly on par for what it should be. It got, it's got good ammo, it's reasonably reliable, but it doesn't do a ton of damage. It's like, typically you want to use the vertebrae as a boss killer. Yeah. So but you want this is one more of a room clearer. clearer. Yeah. And it does home, but it homes less, it's more subtle. If you notice that. Yeah, I can see that now, look, I'm firing it. It's, yeah. it's homing it, a bit, but it, not a lot. It's easier to hit things, but it's not like you can rely on the homing to hit things. Yeah. And I just felt that was that was decent for a. Yeah, I think it is too. You know, for a, a C tier that always homes, the homing shouldn't be that good. I, I gotta say, I think it's a perfectly balanced and like everything about it. It just feels so good in the position it's in. Ooh, hallowed bullets, yes, please. I know that I don't have an auto cast, but it's still good to have. If you remember correctly, how our bullets, isn't it? When our bullets pass through another, it makes them ungemmed. Yes. Yeah. A very useful, um, very useful item to have, even regardless of not having a lot of curse. Kind of future proofs us. Uh, for some reason, my projectiles are being destroyed by the lasers. Yeah, that's that's a thing. Mm, uh, that's strange. I've never experienced that before. I think. No, yeah, that's caused by hallowed bullets. Oh, it is hallowed bullets. I remember that issue with hallowed bullets before, yes. Not I've a major never issue. been able to fix it, and I don't know what's causing it. Basically, you know what? This is my call to help for any other modders watching. I set my thing 
to int my, my my thing. I set my penis to no. <laughs> I I set the you upset your bullet. penis. Yes, absolutely. I set them to collide with enemy bullets, and then in the pre-collision, I I make them uh, just pass through. But uh, hitting a beam doesn't seem to trigger that pre-collision, but still destroys the projectile, presumably because beams do that manually rather than relying on a collision system for some fucking ungodly reason. And this gun gun special. I, I, I still need to figure out a way to fix that. I guess I could try and remove the beam, like, beam blocker collision layer, but I don't know, because I don't know if they have the beam blocker collision layer. Yeah, Because it doesn't make sense strange, that they would. It? So I, I just don't know. It's a bit peculiar, isn't it? Fortunately, not enough enemies fire beams to where it's a humongous yeah. issue. Yeah, it's really only debts, isn't it? Really? And uh, shellatons. Debts, shellatons... Uh, the Beholster. Debts and Shelton's are the only two you have to worry about, though, because they're the only two that can show up more than just the once. Yeah. Yeah. I like Pace how the, um, the Ladderer has become your default boss killer. It's, it's just, it's very, very low effort, and it, it's very useful for, for bosses that are fairly stationary, which this one is. It's just I, I can just pump really... out a bunch of damage and not worry about it. I guess I didn't really think about, like, how many bosses stand still. Basically all of them. <laughs> yeah, it's like there's no in-between. A boss either comes at you like it's... It comes at you like it's six years old and you're the ice cream van. <laughs> or it, like, just sits there. Pretty easy fight there. I don't know why people complain about this boss. So many people claim this is one of the hardest bosses of the hardest bosses on this floor. I think it's by far the easiest one on this floor. It's because he's intimidating. His patterns, like they're easy to dodge once you know how, but well, knowing is, how is the, is the I, whole point. I understand, I kind of understand a little bit for your first few times of fighting this guy that knowing how is a bit difficult. But once you realize if you just sit at the bottom, top, left or right, he's easy. Left or right, less so. Yeah, but bottom or top especially are just like... The, his, his hardest attack is the one where he fires the rings at you. You stand here and they literally cannot hit you. I'd say the only attack of his that is really fucky is the one where he spawns all the bells. Because that one what, can hit what kind of dungeon? What kind of gungeon player are you? Do you stay at the bottom or the top of the Mind Flayers boss room? The oh, Gungeon it, Compass Test. Yeah, to be fair, I have, to, I have to expect most people stay at the bottom. Just because I think it gives you more camera space to work with. Somehow. I don't really know what sense that makes, but I feel like the bottom works better. And that's where you stay? Mm hmm So, would you say that you're a proud bottom? I am a proud bottom. I also have a proud bottom. Flip that. <laughs> <laughs> um. Right. Uh... I don't know what to use. I've not really got any, like, stellar room-clearing weapons. Good there. Hello, I'm good there. Good there. Good there is pretty good. I'm hoping, um, if Apache ends up doing any more modding stuff, that he adds a few more of these sort of dual-wielding bulletkin-type enemies. I think they're a pretty cool addition to the game. And adding just... I mean, what, what more could you of... add, really? He's done bulletkin, shotgun kin, and cultists. Double... D double... D uh, double wielding skullets, maybe? I don't, I don't... I'm not saying specifically they have to be dual wielding. I'm saying, like, like varieties of existing enemies. Where they're just kind of small changes to existing enemies to spice them up a little bit. And they can replace them on the fly sort of thing. I think that really makes for feel better. like something Apache would do unless he had the idea first. Yeah, true. Have to, there'd have to be a good idea to go along with it. Because uh, Apache really does strike me as the kind of guy who, who doesn't, like, he thinks of the, uh, like, mechanic first and builds the idea around it. Yeah. Which is which is a good, that's a good way of designing things. But with Apache in particular, it really shows. Yeah. <laughs> To be fair, I always find that with your design process, 
it really shows as well because you have an idea and you make 40 items around that one idea. And then you really? move on to the next idea. Such as? <laughs> like, when when you were able to make beam weapons, you made a fuckload of beam weapons. When you found out how to um, how to do stuff with, like, cur curse and jammed bullets and stuff, you did a few uh, items and stuff to do with that. Um, and then there was, like, quite a few amulets. And I, I feel like you always make... Uh, 40 was obviously an over-exaggeration, but you, like, find an item type. I don't know what the hell this does. Uh, you find an okay, item... This is an active. Uh, as you deal damage, it levels up, and when you use it, it spawns uh, a chest corresponding to its tier. Okay, I'll try that out. So it starts off as a D tier, and as you deal enough damage, it should level up into a C tier and then a B tier. Nice. And you can get it all the way up to S tier, uh, but getting it this late in the run yeah, is Yeah, it probably unlikely. means it's impossible. I'll probably try to get it to green. Um, but yeah, I, I, I feel like whenever you find an idea or have some, some sort of... Thing, you end up building quite a few items around that idea and then move on to the next one sort of thing. Which is not, a, that's not a bad thing at all. I think that's a good thing. It just usually shows. I have to obfuscate my design process more. I, I, I think it's a good idea because it means that you can, you can take an idea and get quite a lot out of that one idea rather than having the idea, moving on to the next one and then having to come back to it and think of it later. You might as well like, make all the ideas surrounding around that one thing while they're fresh in your head sort of thing. It's a good way yeah, of doing I've, it. Uh, there are more than a few guns in my mod that I, I would have been making one gun, I would have tried to make code its effect, I would have failed, but the failure would have looked interesting enough that I would make have a written unique it item. down to, to be its own gun. Yeah. I like the idea of that. It works. Yeah, I think I think you've done a good job with your mod of like, you've got a lot of content, but very little of it feels fillery. Very little of it feels like it's not unique enough to be its own thing. Like what what I have that is anything that is like kind of fillery, it is something where like yeah, it's kind of fillery, but at the same time. I, I made it because I really, it was some sort of pun or something that I really liked. Yeah, I think also as well, you you do need some fillery things in there. You can't have every single gun be unique, awesome, great damage. There's got to be some shitty average weapons, even, even if they're good damage dealers, where it's just like the M16 sort of thing, where it's just, it's just a good gun. It has nothing yeah, I mean, really super, like, M16 isn't a great example because it has the grenade launcher, but you know what I mean. That's, that's like what uh, uh, Uzi Spine Millimeter is. It's not like, yeah. super fancy in any particular way, but it's cool. Exactly, yeah. And I think they have a, they, like, they really do have a good place in there. I think, I think that's another thing. I added a... Sorry, Karen. No, you, you finish. Uh, as I, I think that's another thing uh, um, in general that's just really difficult with, with a mod, like modding in general, but just like a modding, modding of your size, is trying to create enough good to bad items items that are bad but you want people to be excited about getting I, I, I made a gun that i released as part of this update called the square peg based on the expression a square peg in a round hole oh it upgraded into a synergy chest look oh what the hell how did nice. that happen um I, I believe if i check the uh code Hold on. Actually, I'll just check the wiki page. I got the red robin with the mo with the map bat map man bat and robin. Holy shit! Red robin is a gun that I finished literally like twenty minutes before we started this recording. <laughs> What's the synergy then? Because it doesn't seem to have changed my bats. Man bat and robin. When is you that reload, when you reload the red robin, it spawns a bat like ah. like the Balatera. Is this the synergy you were saying so, earlier? Let's see if I'd get. No, uh, the Red Robin is a D tier gun that deals seventy five percent more damage when you're on full oh. HP. Um. Excuse me. Uh oh, stinky. Do you see what just happened there? I, I think. I got a war mimic and it just instantly disappeared. 
Yeah, so... Uh, so, so moving on from on, that... Gotta be on full red three. HP, yeah. You gotta be on full red HP and it deals 75% more damage. Nice. It's, it's just a dumb little idea. And it's not really a good room clearer this late because it only it only deals as much damage as like a starter weapon. Yeah. Or when you're not on full HP. Why the hell that one that you? I have no idea. Anyhow. Um. We were saying about how it became a synergy chest. Yeah, the pocket chest has a 25% chance to upgrade into a synergy chest instead of a green chest. That's so good that I got that. Nice. I, th I think it leveled up so fast because you're just dealing a lot of damage. Yeah, I think I am. I probably would have been able to get just... into black by the end of Bullet Hell. Yeah, probably, yeah, since you got it that fast, that quick. We're getting a synergy chest, the... pretty cool. The damage requirement for each level does go up, of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah, not, I not that so. blind to balance. <laughs> Yeah, I think, yeah, I think I, you've I, got a pretty good sense for balance now. I think most of your balance mistakes now just come from genuine human error where you didn't realize it would be as powerful as it is. More so than the fact that you didn't balance it correctly. A lot of my balancing mistakes really just have to do with numbers. Mm. Because numbers aren't something I'm good with and they're not really a very human thing to be good with. I'm not saying that mathematicians are lizard people all i'm saying <laughs> is that we shouldn't leave them alone with our children but i get what you mean especially when doing something like in gungeon when you play gungeon you can play it for thousands and thousands and thousands of hours but unless you are getting all your guns with the um the item that shows you damage numbers you don't actually know the exact damage values of what you're dealing so when you're creating new guns and creating new items it can be hard to know what to put as those numbers unless you it's go through like, and read and learn all the balancing of the game. It's more like numbers add a level of abstraction to the process where you can logically know that, oh yeah, this deals the same damage as this other thing, but it, it doesn't really click, like, how that will work with the gun itself. Mm. Yeah, that makes sense. It's, it's like... you. The human brain is really easily fooled by abstraction. Yeah. Like, you take something that would normally annoy someone and you just abstract the concept a little bit and it gets past them. Like, uh, queuing is an example. You, if you remove a person's ability to visualize a line, then they feel less terrible waiting in that line. Mm. See, I'm British, so queuing's in my nature. <clears throat> it still doesn't feel good, though. You don't, like, get up in the morning and you go, Oh, oh boy, yeah. I'm gonna queue! I, I, don't, I don't love it, but I also don't hate it. <laughs> Ooh, arrow, arrow shells. shells. I'm surprised that didn't, like, give you the pop-up. Yeah, it should have done. To. Maybe it's because it's directly added to my inventory. But anyways, yeah, this is gonna randomly select a list of enemies uh, for if, me if to If you instantly. drop it and pick it back up, it should give you the pop-up. Um, fire. Gun Reaper? How does that work? Uh, it should die, just kill Gun Reapers. Okay, fair enough. I'm pretty sure it, it does genuinely just work as if you shoot a Gun Reaper now, that Gun Reaper will die. Nice, that's pretty useful. Uh, and something I did to Aero Shells a while ago. Uh, enemies that you can insta-kill now have a little... Uh, the yes, effect I saw head. that, I really like that. When I noticed because, you'd added uh, that, I, I, yeah, I'm gonna say I was uh, very pleased with that. I think it's a very good idea. You were a very happy boy. Yes. Oh, you fat bitch. And I'm talking to myself there. Uh, God damn it. Why aren't I just using my Elder Blank, you fucking fool? Not a great boss for this weapon. But yeah, that's my, that's my reasoning for why I'm so shit at number balancing in particular. Oh, big old dickhead. So you can know something, but you can't, like, oh, know. Oh my god! Maybe try Tell a different you way. big retard, stop being so stupid. 
maybe try a different weapon. Basically, I've absolutely fucked myself because I didn't manage to do the pre-blank and I, I haven't fought these enemies without doing the pre-blank for such a long time. So I just completely forgot how to fight them normally. It's ruined me. Oh, you're bad. You're bad. I am you're bad. bad. I know, to, to be fair, I'm not gonna Make lie. My Run weapons we fucking kill kill suck. <laughs> like, I've got like one good gun and it's the bat launcher. Everything else kinda sucks. I don't have a single boss killer. You've got like a lot of novelty guns. Very much novelty over like raw damage. Yeah, exactly. Is the icicle isn't terrible, but it increases in its novelty is that it increases in damage the more coolness you have. And I have none. <laughs> no, I have four actually. And icicle gives plus one coolness. So. Yeah, this is like the longest kill pillar fight I've ever had. <laughs> Gunter. Gunter, I hardly even know her. <laughs> God damn, I, I, I misplayed this. Yeah, I'm gonna say, it's just after missing that pre blank, it just broke my brain. I haven't fought this boss normally in so long. I forget how hard this boss is if you don't need the pre blank strat. Ooh, Polaris. Plurus. Plurus. Big old Plurus. Right. Guess we'll use Polaris for a bit. To the next floor! Ba -da 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 -da. Hello! Oh. So, how was everyone's new year? I died. Yeah, no, Turtle hit me up uh, in the middle of the day, <laughs> uh, crying into his rum. Basically, yes. I had a very, very, very drunk conversation with Nevenim. He was I, not I drunk. Didn't <laughs> I didn't realize that you were such a sentimental drunk. Oh, I very much am. I get very emotional. Like, especially rum. Like, I get I get drunk in different ways on different alcohols. Um, I mean, that, I think that's kind of the same for everyone, but rum is, like, specifically for me. Um, He's like, I, I love you. And I, I want to come you. visit you, and I want to go to New Zealand, I, and I want to spoon you under the midnight stars. Basically, exactly that. I, I, I do truly, definitely want to come to New Zealand as soon as humanly possible, for multiple reasons. But obviously, one of them being to visit you. Yeah, yeah, it'd be but, cool. It'd be cool. Definitely. It'd be really fun. Oh like, my! I God. don't, I don't like fishing, but I genuinely want to go fishing with you because I think it would oh. make you would make it fun. <laughs> I, I've been fishing a few times in my life, and I did actually enjoy it. Like, it is it is a quite... If you're doing it with friends, it is actually quite a fun time. I, I don't like I fishing, partly because oh my when God, I go fishing, so I typically wind up having to go fishing with my father, who isn't... Like, he's not a bad guy, but he's also not, like... Not someone you sit and have a talk to relate, with, yeah. He's not someone who's easy to relate to or talk to, considering he's, like, 60. Oh my god, I'm gonna die so fast. He's, like, he's more like, he's 50 something, I think. I, I, get, I get what you mean, though, yeah. He'd probably be very offended if I called him, like, <laughs> 60 to his face. <laughs> I get what you mean, though. It's not. It, it's, it's not gonna be the most sort of, like, chilled experience. No, yeah, yeah. It's, it, oh, it'd be relaxing, it'd be I a bit too died. relaxing, because nothing would happen. To be fair. Nice. Like, yes, I am a garbage man full of garbage shit and that's why i died but also my weapons sucked but we got the crossbow late in the game pretty terrible the, you got the crossbow which is shit you the, got the, the winchester's stick good which needs to do enough which needs to do a bit more damage yeah you got polaris, polaris on, which is terrible leveling up. um the you gunther which is good too. but not good on later levels it's got too low ammo uh, it's got decent damage but not like damage enough to carry around you got the uh uzi spine millimeter which is fine you got chamber gun, which is very situational. You got the tetrominator, which is uh, garbage, <laughs> truly terrible. Which is the which is the reason why God sent the flood. <laughs> you got red robin, which is only good if you have full HP, and you didn't. You got the icicle, which uh, it, it fires it's too slow. Decent. It's good, but it's fire rate is so slow. 
You got the wall ray, which is very dependent on your ability to shoot sideways. And you got the Bolatero, which is very dependent on the, the bullets doing what you want them to. And even then, if we check my items, Primal Salt Peter literally didn't matter the entire run, really. The Shrink Amulet is fine, but you only only works when you get hit. We had that S tier thing, which I genuinely never well, it, noticed it existed. Doesn't, it doesn't only work when you get hit. Well, it only you works when you weren't blank, using yeah. your blanks. But yeah, we got we got that S tier thing from Prismatism that I genuinely didn't see any. I didn't feel its use at all. You got junk, which I think carried the run. I did. Uh, I got that double A battery, which literally never came into play. <laughs> um, you got uh, banana jam hands, which uh, actually was, was okay. Fine. Yeah, it was actually it was, okay. It was there. Aeroshell, I, I think ba the batter shot was pretty good. The aeroshells was a bit too late. And same with the elder blank, it was a bit too late. And obviously the hollowed bullets didn't really matter because I didn't actually f have much curse. So, all in all, yeah, pretty garbage run, but it was fun, though. We had to see a lot of uh, unique and cool items, which is... All... This is this is what I mean, though. We got quite a few of your items, and some of the ones from other mods as well, that were bad, but they were fun. Like, mm -hmm. I had a good time with them. They are interesting to use weaponry, even if they kind of suck. Uh, I think I could go for another round if you want to do another, if you want to oh, do another recording. yes. Yes, I do. Yeah, right, go on. Stick it in, big boy. <laughs> You ever say something and then just sort of sit back and wonder what you just said? <laughs> Basically, whenever I message you, I immediately go and check my title quotes. Things I, I say it and then I'm like, oh no, he's gonna go post that. And you always, you always do, you always do. Fastest <laughs> copy paste in the West. <laughs> Every time I'm like, oh no, the way that I worded that is terrible. If, if taken out of context, I'm gonna look like a fucking pedophile. And it's like, oh no, 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 posted it. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we will end this one here and go for another. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs>